I thrive on the hatred of my audience. The more you complain about the green screen, the more stupid stuff I'm putting back there. So the title is not clickbait. I did in fact find Aeon Legion Labyrinth by J.P. Bobine, who is best known for creating the Terrible Writing Advice channel here on YouTube. Now I've actually wanted to read this for quite a while because I've discovered TWA way back when he first started. I think it was around 2016, and when I found him, he had about 3,000 subscribers. So that, this was a long time ago, and it was early on in his channel's history. And at first, he mostly was using it to promote this book. Uh, he hasn't talked about it in a while, though, and he hasn't written anything new since 2016. But I finally did get around to reading it. I actually bought it like a year and a half ago, but I'm only just reading it recently. And uh, it's kind of hard for me to talk about because it is astoundingly average. Like, yeah, it's not particularly good. It's not particularly bad. It's like I, I come away from it and go, yeah, that was, that was all right. You know, there's not a lot spectacular to go over, not a lot bad to go over. It's just, yeah, it's all right. And Labyrinth has, you know, a really cool opening. You know, once the story starts off, I was really into it. It has a really cool setting. I liked that. It has a relatively large cast of characters who all have, you know, distinct personalities and everything. Even if they're not all amazing, they're distinct personalities. But it all comes together and it's, yeah, it's all right. It's, it's very much less than the sum of its parts. And it, it just fails to coalesce into anything greater. And I think the biggest part of that is that the story itself is really boring and really badly told, which I'll get to more later, obviously. But because of that, it's like the shell of the whole book with all the uh, individual parts inside of it. The shell just falls apart and causes all of the individual parts to scatter. And so they no longer come together the way they should. Now, seeing as this was J.P. Bobine's first published book, I want to go a little easier on it. And also, because I like him, there's a part of me that wants to, but I'm, I'm not going to, partially because that would be dishonest, but it would also be kind of disrespectful. You know, like, as a critic, I need to say what I think about things, because if I'm not saying what I think about things, then what's even the point of me being here? Like, J.P., I, I don't know the guy, but I mean... He's an adult, he can handle it, and again, Aeon Legion Labyrinth isn't bad, it's just fine. Which is, quite frankly, a lot more than you should expect from a self-published YouTuber book. So what's Aeon Legion Labyrinth about? Well, we start with an 18-year-old girl named Tara, who's just hanging out at the library one day, when suddenly a time portal opens and a bunch of Nazis come out, and they start taking people hostage, she talks to the leader of the Nazis, who is a guy named Hans Speer, and he is specifically looking for history books because he wants to learn more about World War II and how it went so that he can go back in time and use it to win the war. Although, granted, he thinks that the Nazis winning the war is inevitable, but this way he'll get to do it faster and with less loss of life. And then a woman named Silverwind comes through the portal and she uses her magical powers to fight all the Nazis and send them back in time. And during it, Tara helps her out just a little bit, and so Silverwind offers her a spot in the Aeon Legion. And the Aeon Legion are basically just time cops. You know, they prevent people from messing up the timelines too bad, because if you do that too badly, then the timeline will actually collapse and kill everyone in it. And after some deliberation, Tara does eventually agree, and thus the story unfolds. Of course, I say the story unfolds from there, but there isn't any story other than training. Like, that's literally the whole book, up until, like, the climax at the very end. It's all just Terra entering the Aeon Legion, Terra forming rivalries with some of the other people who are trying to train and join up, Terra uh, getting better with her powers and learning more about this world. Just, that that's it. That's the whole book, and I'll be honest with you, it feels like a massive, massive prologue. Like, geez, man. It, it, I really just kept waiting for, to reach a point in the book where it would just skip ahead and go two years later, and then we'd get to see Terra be a member of the Aeon Legion, and we'd get to actually see her be a time cop and go off and do the cool stuff that we were promised at the beginning of the story, but it just, it does not happen at any point in this book. Disappointed! 
And it's a shame because I did care about most of these characters. You know, again, most of them did have personality. They weren't all super likable, but the ones who were unlikable were clearly meant to be that way. Like the characters who are jerks were written to be jerks. So that works. But as much as I liked all these people, I didn't care at all about what they were doing. You know, Tara works well as a normal person who was just swept up in these crazy circumstances and now has to learn about this whole new world and go on adventures and everything. And like she works that as that because she never gives up and she's kind of inspiring. Even though she's not particularly good at fighting or using her powers or anything, she manages to pull through just by pushing herself harder than anyone else is willing to push her and it's really great. And then she meets other characters, like Silverwind, I mentioned earlier. She's just like a really cool, powerful warrior, and she plays that part well. There's a little bit more to her, but mostly she's just the cool, powerful warrior, mentor character. There's also other people that are in training to join the Legion along with Terra, like Zaid, who was a former Egyptian Mamluk with a really powerful sense of honor, and he's really helpful to Terra. We've got Hans, who I mentioned earlier. You know, he's, he's the villain, he's a Nazi, but he's kind of a compelling character because he is not really evil. You know, I know that sounds strange, but he does genuinely believe in their ideology and everything, but he disagrees with the brutality of it. Hans, are we the baddies? Like there's a point that uh, hammers this home for me where he basically says that he doesn't like Jews very much, but he also thinks that other Nazis are ridiculous when they start talking about like an international cabal that's conspiring to destroy the Aryan race. Like. He thinks that's ridiculous. Like, he, he just is a German nationalist who is willing to go along with them, but is also, like, not super into everything they do. Like, that's a compelling setup for a villain. We never really get a conclusion to that, at least not in this book. Maybe if sequels ever come out, we might get one, but I don't know if J.P. Bobeen is ever planning on <laughs> writing any sequels. And then there's a couple other characters like that, too. And, like... They're good, compelling characters, but they don't really do anything that has stakes. You know, they, they are just in training, and if they fail, then they will not get to enter the Legion. And I mean, that does suck, but I don't, I, I don't really care that much about it. You know, they're not trying to save anything. And I mean, okay, granted, maybe if the book was shorter, I'd be okay with the only real stakes being will they be able to make it into the Aeon Legion or not, but this book is fairly long and so it just, it, it doesn't work when you're dragging it on that long. It just, it just doesn't. The world this takes place in is also really, really neat. Like the Aeon Legion itself lives in Saturn City, which is at like the end of time, uh, but then there's also multiple different timelines and there's not an infinite number which you may think because that's how time travel usually works, but in this world there's only a couple of really big events which could have gone different ways. Like I believe the first divergence is uh, with Alexander the Great, and from there the timeline splits in three, and then there's a couple of other big ones, and so we have all these timelines existing side by side, and the Aeon Legion can travel between them, but they, they're they all very different, and we see people from different timelines and everything. It's not just people from the past and future of Terra's timeline, which is ours. And there's also explanations about why you can't go back and meet yourself and stuff like that. It's really, really cool. And then there's groups we meet, like the Forgotten Guns, who are people who decided to destroy slash kill uh, evil people in their timelines, like, you know, dictators and serial killers and stuff. And they actually got away with it for a while, but because they killed people who were really important to the timeline, their entire timeline collapsed and killed billions of people. So the Aeon Legion hunted them down. And like, that sounds really cool. We also hear about these monsters called the Faceless who are like humans, but they have these masks and they d were just somehow mutated or I don't know if mutated is the right word, but they were somehow changed by going to the end of time and they decay everything around them, you know? Metal rusts and even light, like the area around them becomes dark because they decay light particles. That's really cool. We don't see a whole lot with them either, but they're mentioned and that's cool. And, you know, we hear about a bunch of big wars and stuff that all happened in the past, but that's the thing. They all happened in the past. You know, like at the time this book takes place, it feels like all the other cool stuff has already happened. And I kept asking myself like, okay, can we, can we get a book about that maybe? 
Like, can we get a book about the forgotten guns? Can we get a book about the faceless? No, we're just, we're just here with Terra training the whole time? All right. Overall, the main thing I can say about Aeon Legion Labyrinth is that it feels like a training arc from a shonen battle anime that went on way too long. You know, like, n like Naruto re learning the Rasengan, except it goes on for 30 episodes. That's what this feels like. Now, to clarify, I don't hate training arcs in anime. Granted, I don't really watch anime much anymore, but back when I did watch it, I didn't hate training arcs because they were actually a lot of fun sometimes. They were, like, satisfying to... It was satisfying to watch these characters you knew and loved grow more powerful. It was satisfying to watch them put in effort and be rewarded for putting in that effort. But you can't start with a training arc, and that's what Aeon Legion does. Like, you need to have some sort of big obstacle that the heroes run into and they decide, okay, I must overcome that. Otherwise, you may as well just skip over the training, or at least most of it, and then just cut to the actual story when the character is like actually trained as a warrior or investigator or whatever else, you know? Because if they don't have that obstacle to overcome, you know, like, oh, I was defeated by that villain and now I must go find this master and train under him for a while to learn a new special power and then I'll use that to defeat the villain. You know, if we don't have that motivation for them to go do it, then it just becomes noise and it just, it doesn't work. So that's Aeon Legion Labyrinth. You know, like I said, it's, it's very just mid. You know, it has a lot of good parts, but the story connecting them all is very boring, and so the good parts just don't really get a chance to shine. I do want to see sequels, you know, like the ending intrigued me a little bit. I want to see where this goes. I want to know more about Terra and her adventures and stuff, but I don't know if we're ever getting those. Uh, but, you know, if uh, the setup for this sounds cool or anything, then go check it out, I guess. You know, again, J.P. Bobine's a small indie author, and if possible, I want to try supporting him. Like, I'm, I'm glad I bought this book from him to support him a little bit. And if you don't want to do that, then check out the Terrible Writing Advice YouTube channel. But, yeah, other than that, I don't have a lot to say. A on Legion Labyrinth was just very mid Obviously, don't forget to like the video, and comment on it, and subscribe, and share it all around to all your friends until they hate you. Uh, goodbye. Hello to everyone who watched this far. Not sure why you did that, but, you know, thanks. Appreciate it. You're cool. Uh, all these names you see here, those are my patrons. Special thanks to my $10 and up patrons who are Arthur D. Gonzalez Martin, Brother Santodes, Carolina Clay, Dan Antselievich, Ich bin Langweilig, Jalal Dalul, Kiana Arms, Lexi Delorme, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Michael and Katie Hake, Proscriptions of Juo Jang, Rovi, Psych XS, Tesla Shark, Toa Michael, Vevictus, Wesley, and Zenitech89. You're cool. I like you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this. If you want access to exclusive content as well as early access to my videos, and you want your name here, then consider donating over on Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member. You know, that works too. I don't have anything else to say here. I don't know why you're still watching. Goodbye.